These five AI tools are huge time savers for editing videos. Honestly, at this point, I just feel spoiled. I'm Raphael and welcome to the channel where our goal is to always fix it in camera and then finesse it in post. And AI is making the boring and very complex tasks that you have to do as an editor so much easier. So these are the five tools that I'm using right now. So the first one is Time Bolt, and this works fantastic for any footage that you have recorded that is talking head, interview, podcast, anything that you know will have breaks and pauses. It essentially does the rough edit and gets rid of all the spaces that are in the video. And it's super simple to use and you can use it with Final Cut, Premiere, DaVinci, doesn't matter because it spits out an XML that imports the whole edit for you. And one of the reasons I like Time Bolt as well is because it does have a multi-cam workflow. It's not super straightforward, but there is a way to get it done. So it's super simple, drop your file, let it do its thing, and it analyzes all the speech, everything within the video, then it generates a preview, and you can actually use this as an editor right here and export your video. So if you have a talking piece and there's some quiet parts in it, you're gonna be able to just use this piece of software and export it. It allows you to do punch-ins and it's a great little tool, but I mainly use it for uh, exporting an XML to bring in to my editor of choice, that being Final Cut Pro. But the audio is done and any red section, that's the section it's gonna cut out. You can adjust how much padding you want before and after. I have a whole video that is dedicated just to Time Bolt if you wanna check it out. But yeah, it'll generate the preview. Uh, I don't wanna do that for this video, so I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna export an XML. If you're using something other than Final Cut, you do XML. But for this case, I'm just gonna press the Final Cut Pro version. It spits out an XML that's right here. Then you just go to the library that you want, go to File, Import, go to XML, make sure you find the XML that you just made, this one's right now, and then you click Import. Sometimes this error message comes up, but it doesn't actually affect anything with the edit. Press OK. So you find the event that it creates, open up the timeline, and your edit is there with all the silences cut out. So this is just the opening. Typically I just go and kind of do a rough cleanup on any clips that are there that I know aren't gonna be of use. And you just open up the file and then you can go and you can start editing. And it's just saves so much time because you can see where all, where all the edits are. And if you're recording yourself, you can see where all the flubs would be and you can just go in and quickly delete it. This is such a huge time saver when you're doing this over and over again. So if you're a content creator, this is a great way to get through a lot of content really quick. And in this case, Timebolt was almost able to cut out 10 minutes, if not more, of just silence throughout that one video clip. So that's 10 minutes that you don't have to sit through while you're doing your rough edit. Timebolt, as the name states, is a huge time saver that I have found myself using over and over again. It is a paid app. You can do a subscription or you can do a one-time buyout. There is a link in the description if you're interested in it. I also did a video where I go through Timebolt exclusively. But right now, let's move on to the next one. The next tool I find myself using so often, it's called Keeper. And simply what it does is it it uses machine learning to cut out people from the background now it only works on people at the moment but i find that i use this so often and it's just a simple way to be able to color correct the background separate it from the foreground or vice versa it's so fast it just it it's a huge time saver than trying to figure out how to do masking uh, and it really helps because it isolates the clothing as well it's you're not just doing color sliders it's a great way to be able to adjust the two separate layers really, really quickly without too much effort. Again, I, I feel spoiled with this plugin to be able to do these kind of things. And above and beyond that, it quickly allows you to drag a title right underneath. So you can have a title that animates on behind your subject. It's Again, it's a really quick tool to let you get your idea across as fast as possible. 
So the next tool that I use is a captioning tool. There's actually two of them. I'll briefly go through both of them because they do function a little bit differently and they do have their benefits and their quirks, but both are relatively inexpensive and they're fantastic for uh, doing transcriptions. So the first one is captioners. So I'm just gonna do a small example. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna set my in and out point for that piece of audio. I'm gonna go to share and then captionator and it'll just export that audio. And when it's done, it'll open up the app by itself. And you can save presets for different styles of captions. Um, you can do your Mr. Beast style captions and you can adjust the, the type of font. You can choose how many words you wanna do, one to a few words, and you can save your own preset within it. But once you click generate, it asks you where you want to save that choose the library you want it to go into. Then it's a simple process of just selecting the captions that you want, going back to your timeline, and then just dropping them on. There is a reason that professionals choose carefully which pair of headphones they use to mix with. You need something that is... And then you have your captions. And they usually come in right in the center, but it's relatively simple to put them where you want them. Go over to the transform tool and just drop them down. And if you want to make them bigger, you can also do that here too. Scale them up and just find what's comfortable for you. There is a reason that professionals choose carefully which pair of headphones they use to mix with. You need something that is durable, that lets you hear every detail, not too So that's Captionator. So the other one that I use is Caption for FCP. I like this one because it allows you to do something that is a little bit different than Captionator. This will do the entire timeline, so make sure that you have the portion that you want selected. It'll transcribe it, but it'll allow you to edit it right in the app. You can do either sentences or individual words. You can choose the way it's animated as well. You can choose your own font. You can also export the captions for it. I like that you can go in and edit the words right here instead of in Final Cuts. You can quickly, at a glance, find the words that are misspelled and just correct them right here. And you can also change the layout if you wanted to. So if you if there are too many words in a specific place, you'll know the way it's going to do it. And then you just go generate captions. You save it to where you want it to go. And once you're done, then you import your XML And just as before, you copy it and then you drop it into place. This is where professional headphones are designed to produce that flat frequency response. Me it's a quick way to get that Mr. Beast look for your videos or for your videos, for your shorts, for your TikToks, it doesn't matter. It's a great little tool. So those tools both do the same thing and they're both roughly around the same price and there's no subscription and you can find them at the Mac in the Mac App Store. The link is in the description for both of those. So another tool that I use is the Remix feature in Premiere Pro. This is really the only time I use Premiere Pro for this feature specifically. So you drag in your audio, put it onto your timeline, you go to the Ripple Edit tool, you click and hold on it, and you click on the Remix tool. What this actually does is allows you to change the duration of your track to whatever length that you need it to be. So if you need the song to be shorter, you drag it to say you need a 30 second long track. It'll analyze it and then it'll just spit out a version that has a beginning, middle and end that is roughly that length. You can adjust it to be whatever it needs to be. And if you notice, it has these squiggly lines. That means that's where Premiere actually made the splices in the video. Let's just zoom into that and just take a listen to where it actually changed on those sections. It is a really handy feature. Like I said, I don't use Premiere a lot, but say you want it to be a little bit shorter, it'll reanalyze it. Once it's analyzed it, you can adjust it to be whatever you want it to be. 
And on the flip side, if you need it to be longer, like say your video is five minutes long, it'll do the same thing with that piece of audio and it'll just repeat the sections, but it's not just repeating it. And it takes a lot of the guesswork out of the entire process. You would just save this out and you would export it and then you put it into whatever project you want. And if you're working in Premiere Pro, you're already done. Now, Premiere has some other great built-in features that you can use for that transcribe that will reorient stuff. It has some really good machine learning aspects to it. I just personally don't like using Premiere Pro uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I'm more comfortable in Final Cut. So use the software that works best for you. Now, another AI tool that I love using is actually built right into Final Cut and it's voice isolation. This is great if you're working with audio that has a lot of background noise, other fans, or just in more atmospheric settings. I use voice isolation where there were a lot of motorcycle noises and truck noises outside the window of an interview that we were filming. And this worked really well to get rid of that. And in this example, you can actually hear a lot of fan noise that I have from the lights, from the AC. Produce that flat frequency response, meaning that the audio will sound more accurate and, and when I turn delight. on voice isolation, that is why mixing 50% doesn't get rid of all of it. That is the key to find the route. That is why, that is why, but you can play with it until you find that sweet spot. On neutral headphones is the thing on where it's a nice balance between the voice and the background. So it does balance it nicely. It's a great little tool to just clean up audio that can be harsh or save audio that would be otherwise hard to use. I speak a lot about fixing it in post or finessing in post. And with visuals, you can do so much. And with audio, almost all issues are really hard to be able to get rid of them. So having a tool like this does help that process and makes more audio usable. And now speaking with audio, if you want to take that one step further and you have an account with Adobe, they have Adobe Podcast and it's still in beta and there's limited access. But if you do have an account, you can actually try their AI audio. So once you get into the back end, you select your audio, you just drag and drop it. It'll process it in the background, but just make sure you use it sparingly because if you try to do it more than once in an hour, you'll have to wait. But once you have it, typically what I do is to try to find that sweet spot. Uh, listen to it if you really like it, but a trick that I use to try to find the balance if it seems too boomy or doesn't sound exactly the way you want it to sound is you mix the two audio pieces together and pump one a little bit louder than the other. So the other one just complements the, the first one and just find that sweet spot of what sounds best for your audio. This is where professional headphones are designed to produce that flat frequency response, meaning that the audio will sound more accurate and true to life. And the goal is to find something that sounds natural, but also professional. And just having these tools, these machine learning tools that are able to get refined and become better over time, it will just make the whole editing and content creation process so much easier. And it allows you to iterate much quicker and keep you in a creative flow instead of becoming too technical on any of these aspects. So those are the AI tools that I'm using currently. But if you wanna find out which my favorite plugins for Final Cut Pro are, make sure you check out this video where I talk about my five favorite. Also, I live stream on my second channel where I deep dive on the creative process as well as freelance financials. So make sure you check that out. As always, thanks for watching.